Welcome in everybody. Ty Bartell in with another edition of Coach's Corner. This time we are joined by my man from the Warren John F. Kennedy Eagles, Coach Comlake. I like to call him Coach K from JFK. He also has, I think, the best backdrop out of all the coaches yeah. that we talk to year in and year out. <laughs> Got to show it off. Got to show it off. <laughs> How are we doing today, man? Doing really well. Really excited. Uh, thank you so much for having me on. Uh, you guys do a great job of uh, supporting our, our local athletes, local teams and schools. So I, I really appreciate the invitation. Well, we always love having you and I always love talking a little bit of hoops with you, sir. And it's practice season. It's scrimmage season right now. I don't know exactly to the extent of how many scrimmages you had because that football team did pretty uh, did yeah. pretty well this year. But when you talk about the practices, what you're seeing out of the boys so far, early season, preseason, what has uh, stood out to you? Uh, our, our intensity and our willingness to learn. I think we have a lot of uh, guys who are stepping out of the shadows and that's kind of our catchphrase for the year um, at Kennedy every, every year we expect to, you know, exceed everybody else's expectations, but our standards are pretty high and we, we expect every single year, no matter who it is that's going out there that, that we're meeting those standards. And, and this year we have guys who have been putting in the work uh, in the shadows the past three, four years. Cause last year we graduated five seniors, um, two who were thousand point scorers. We had a point guard who had, 700 points and 500 assists um, and another kid who had 400 rebounds. So that, that's hard to replace, but, but our guys have been working, uh, you know, tirelessly for the last two, three years in the shadows. And this year they get to step out and kind of show how good they are and how much they've been working. Um, and I've been most impressed this year. We probably had our worst first practice I've ever had. And in a matter of three, four practices, the change it was remarkable because they're they're teachable uh they, they want to learn and, and the energy and enthusiasm it, it is infectious and it's it's just passing along so our strides from day one to now is it, it, it's night and day you wouldn't even recognize the team from day one to where we are now and it's only been you know I, I think we have seven practices in so so it's it's pretty impressive what they've been doing and and how they've you know, kind of taking on the, the, the student part of it, learning the game and, 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 you know, in a matter of five minutes of breaking down something like they're getting it pretty quickly and from day one to day two to day seven, like it, it's night and day. And it's, it's, it's really fun to watch and be a part of. I love looking at younger teams and guys that are now freshly into starting roles because the growth, like I always say, you see from game one to game 22 is yeah. always, I think, some of the largest growth. And that's what I'm always excited for, because the team that you play like at the beginning of the season not, isn't necessarily the same as uh, as you're playing at the end of the season. Coach, who are some of the big names that we're going to have to get used to in the in the Kennedy community this year that's going to be on the hardwood? Well, we return Nick Ryan, who's a thousand point scorer, and he'll be a four year starter for us. So it, he's our centerpiece and everybody knows that he's the guy that that makes us run. Uh, but we also return Christian Swagger, Henry Phillips, Matt Wagner. Uh, we got a couple guys who took last year off that are coming back. Dom Ryan and Noah Elser, who will big, be big pieces. Uh, Preston Jarrett Sassano. Uh, you know, and we got some younger guys that I think by the end of the season are going to be stepping up and, and providing some huge minutes for us uh, as role players. So uh, it starts with Nick, uh, but then Henry plays valuable minutes last year and he, he can just straight shoot the ball. Uh, Matt Wagner and Christian Swagger are guys that they're glue guys. They make they make the team run and, and they do all the little things. And Christian can shoot the shoot the crap out of the ball. He's, he's pretty darn good. And um you know, adding Preston into the mix helps because he, he's a kid who can score and defend uh, the expectations for those guys. They, they understand their roles and we're we're still developing some of them. And like you mentioned, football, uh, we don't know how many football players we're going to end up having. It could be five. It could be seven. Um, and we just tell them, focus on football and, and keep winning and, and we'll we'll handle we'll deal with that when we have to. Uh, it's nothing new. It's something we've dealt with for, for nine years. And, and even before me, they had to deal with that. So uh, the expectation is, is they focus on football when they come in. Like you said, 22 games, our regular season is just kind of a preseason for us for the tournament. And, and come uh, end of February, the expectation is that we're going to be clicking on all cylinders. And we've done a pretty good job with as a coaching staff and as a program of making sure when, when the end of February comes that we're, we're, we're at our peak. 
you mentioned it. You lose five impact seniors from a year ago, all of them very, very talented players in their own right. Does the identity of this team shift a little bit after losing players like that? Do you rely on different strengths to get your wins this year? I, I think – the foundation has been laid. These guys have been playing in the system for a long time. So they understand some of it's going to be exactly the same. We're going to get up. We're going to play intense defense uh, in your face. And, and we want to, we want to push the pace and we want to try and score in the seventies. Uh, so that part doesn't change, but how we do it is probably going to change. Cause uh, you know, Michael Condoglia, Nico Seminero, Jaden Rischel, Quinn Miola, those guys are, like they played together for so long that they knew where each other was going to be. And right now the growing pains is not everybody's in the correct spacing. So we have to stop stuff and show them on film. Like this is where we should be. Um, and maybe, maybe we won't be as fluid as we were in the past couple of years, but I think we have some stuff in place that is going to highlight the strengths of this team and still allow us to play fast. Um, I I'm excited for what we're going to be able to do defensively. Cause I do think we have, at any given time, any five guys we put out there, they, they can get up into you and play really good defense. And they all rebound the ball very, very well. Um, not afraid to get on the floor. Uh, it's just we talk about intensity and effort are two things that that we can uh, we can't live with, you know, not being at the level that we expect. So uh, we scrimmaged Cornerstone Christian last Saturday, who's a, probably a top five team in the state, Division seven. Um, and we had a couple practices in before. So it was going to be ugly. And I told him, I know it's going to be ugly, but the two things that, that I can't accept is lack of intensity and lack of effort. And, and these guys have given it every single day. Um, you know, when you watch us play, you can expect to see that we're going to try and score quickly. We want to score in uh, under 15 seconds. If we have a possession that's more than 30 seconds, I, I go, I, I go nuts. Um, so they're getting used to that, but I, I, I fully expect that uh, while there'll, there'll be some small changes as far as offensive technique and things that we're doing in the half court, the game plan is still going to remain. We want to play a fast pace. We want to make you uncomfortable and, and we want to get shots up, um, you know, every 15 seconds that we have the ball, we want to try and score in the seventies, how we do that. We're still tinkering with it a little bit. And like you said, it, it, it's like, a, it's a life cycle. It's a roller coaster. right now. We're in the infancy stage and we're trying to piece things together and, and I'm sure we'll get really good at it and then they'll get comfortable just like teenagers and think, oh, I got this all figured out and kind of get a little lax. And then uh, they'll have some bumps in the road and then they'll, they'll reawaken and realize, uh, you know, now now I'm an adult and it's time to mature and, and accept those things. We go through it every single year. And so it's not a surprise to me. Um, it's frustrating, but it's just it's it's what coaching is. It's what any sport is it's what life is and uh so we expect a roller coaster but i i think come february 24th or whenever it is that the tournament starts we'll be we'll be clicking on all cylinders you mentioned the schedule as something to prepare you for the tournament and it was funny i actually was looking at some of the team schedules and i looked at hobins and i was like man hoban has a really tough schedule then i looked at your guys i'm like wow they don't really play a whole lot of different teams from yeah. from that too and you guys are four divisions below them i mean teams like like hoban you're playing but you're playing lutheran west you're playing teams like gilmore academy i mean talk about this schedule man i mean you bolstered it up once again you're going to prepare them and baptize them by fire by the time they're, they're going yes. into the playoffs. Yeah. They don't really have much choice. Um, and, and every year when the season comes, I look at the schedule and I'm like, man, this is, a, it's a really tough schedule. Maybe next year we'll, we'll pull back on it. But uh, <laughs> last year was really tough and this year is probably tougher. Um, we pick up Berlin Highland. We pick up Ashland, Newcastle. Uh, and our last four games uh, we play Mooney, Lake Center, Christian, Lutheran West, and Gilmore <laughs> Academy. Um, and then you throw in Cleveland Central, Canfield, Hoban, Boardman. Um, but the expectation is that we need, in order to be where we want to be every year in the the running for, you know, top five team in the state, we have to compete at a higher level. So in order to do that, you got to play bigger schools um, who have a, a winning tradition. And, you know, sometimes when, when you got fresh faces like we do this year, they learn from playing those teams because those teams have that standard and expectation and, and you don't want to dumb it down for them. And, and I wouldn't do that to them. And while every year I look at the schedule and I'm like, man, this is a really tough schedule. This might be the toughest schedule. 
and then the next year you look at it again and and i i have it up on the board here and i'm looking at it it's it's pretty darn tough you know <laughs> uh, i think we play two division seven teams and the rest are between d3 and and uh d6 most of them d3 d4 d5 so we're going to be prepared um and like i said we will have some bumps in the road but but that's to be expected when you play the cal- caliber of teams that we do because they they have they all have great traditions and and like I said, I, I kind of hope that our kids learn from the way they go about and do things. And I think in the course of nine years, we've had that. Our guys have been able to kind of look at what Hoban does and what a Gilmore Academy does and what Canfield does and what those programs do and emulate that um, on the court and, and even off the court. Like so um, our, our I, I love the schedule. I, I wouldn't change it. Um, we travel a lot, but again, a lot of that is because what of our goal is, and and our goal is to eventually we want to get down to state, you know, and and we've been close, and we we've, we've been nip and tuck to, to have the opportunity to get there, and and you know we're just hoping that this is a year that maybe maybe we can get down there, but every year that's the expectation, is cut down nets and have an opportunity to get into the final four, and when you get down there, anything can happen. You talk about it. I'm always been a for, I've always been a firm believer of uh, consistency at the top brings consistency all the way to the bottom too. And your nine years consistency at the top too, yeah. I think, has also helped bring consistency to this program. I also think you do a really good job of just connecting with young men too. And I mean, sometimes young men are receptive to uh, to coaching. Sometimes they they think they know it all, and sometimes they're a little bit stubborn. You 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 see all those different types of personalities. I'm I'm sure, but it feels like you always get the most out of your players. What's your secret? in doing that and being able to have those connections with so many young men that have those different types of personalities. I I've adapted. I mean, it's, I've been doing this for 25 years. And when I first started, I was just hard nose in your face, <laughs> yell and scream. And uh, even my former players will come back and, and, and they'll uh, watch practice and be like, coach K is a marshmallow now. Like you, you guys have not, no idea what he was like before, but you have to adapt. I mean, every kid's a little bit different. So you have to develop good relationships with them. And it, it's nice to be in the building with the kids all day. So, so I do have an opportunity to check in on them, go into the classrooms, talk to them about grades, talk to them about life and what's going on at, at, at home, outside of home and classes um, and, and just building that relationship and letting them know that I truly care about them as individuals. And it's so much more than just, you know, what happens on the court on game night. Uh, you know, this past weekend, I watched the Marietta game. Nico Seminaro was playing there and I sent him a text right after the game. And he's like, how, how did you? how'd you know? Were you watching it? And I was like, of course I was watching it. Like I'm invested in these kids and I hope that they get it. And I think that they do. And that's part of why it's really pretty easy to adapt to these kids and for them to adapt to me and, and give a hundred percent all the time, because that's all we're asking for. And when you're invested and you build those relationships, you do understand there's different communication styles with each kid. Like some, I know there are kids I can get on. And they need me to yell at them. They want me to yell. And then we've had cases where kids have come to me and they're like, coach, you need to yell at me. If you don't yell at me and you just <laughs> talk to me, I'm not going to respond. Um, and, and we try to make sure that with our coaching staff in general, we develop that relationship with our kids. And, and obviously some coaches are much, much closer with players than, than what, even what I am. So they, they are the ones that get after them in practice and they respond to those kids. So we, it's a family. You know, there everybody has, you know, sometimes you go to mom, sometimes you go to dad, sometimes you go to aunt, uncle, grandma, grandpa. Um, and, and that's what we have here. So even if they don't respond necessarily to me, they respond to someone here. And we, we try and make sure that we develop that through our summer and spring and fall. And and it, it's just been, a, a you know, something that we take a lot of pride in. And I think our kids do, do too. So. What are some of those other big names in this uh, Kennedy program too? Some of your assistants, some other guy, guys and girls you feel like just need a, a shout out and some love here. Dave Smith, he's been with this. He's been with me two times. Um, he's been coaching for years, tons of varsity experience, uh, really, really valuable guy. He, he communicates well with the kids. He has great relationships with them. Uh, and then Zach Tasker is the other varsity assistant. And he, uh, he coaches baseball here as well. And we're small school, so kids play every sport, um, whether it's soccer, football, basketball, baseball. They, they're all doing something. And having um, 
Coach Tasker on the baseball field as well allows him to develop even deeper relationships with these kids. And um, he, he can sometimes just talk to him about baseball during basketball season and it relaxes them. Uh, so those are the, my, my two sidekicks at the varsity level. And then this year at our junior high level, we were blessed to be able to get two, uh, two very, very experienced coaches at the varsity level. Uh, Donnie Seminero is going to be doing our seventh grade and Eric Harper, who was at Mineral Ridge the last couple of years of a varsity coach is going to be doing our eighth grade. So we got guys who have a lot of experience. And I think that when you can spread it out between seventh grade through 12th grade, it allows these kids to mature and develop in the way that we want them to. You're no doubt one of the biggest teachers in the sport of basketball. You've taught so many young men, countless young men throughout the years, the sport, how to relate the sport to life, how to how to just become better young men in life. But I, the theme question that I have for all my coaches this year is actually the biggest lesson the sport of basketball has taught you. I, I, I mean, that's a that's, it's a good question because it probably depends on the day. Um, <laughs> I mean, Flexibility is a big one. Uh, I, I think it's hard to pinpoint just one. So I would say probably uh, flexibility and, and and just ad, adapting uh, because day to day things are going to change. And if you're not flexible and you're not able to adapt, you, you're going to struggle in life in general. Um, and in the coaching world, like you have a snow day. What are you going to do on that day if you can't get into the gym? How, you got to be flexible. You got to be flexible with scheduling. You got to be flexible with the kids' schedule because, again, small school. These kids are doing multiple things. You know, Jane Rischel is at Malone right now. He's pitching for them. He, we knew that that's what he was going to be going to college for last year. We had to be flexible with him and figure out how we were going to do our practices so he could still have time with his pitching coach because that was his bread and butter, and we wanted to make sure that we could do that. Uh, but also just being being able to adapt uh, in life in general, because like I said earlier, you're going to have a roller coaster of a season. You're going to have a roller coaster of a life. There, how you react to those situations when it's tough is really, really important. Um, and if you're not flexible and you're not being able to adapt, uh, you're, you're going to be stuck in that lower part of the, the roller coaster and you're not going to be able to climb back up. So I, I think the two lessons I've learned is, is to be flexible and be willing to adapt. And even when we talk about communication styles and how I, I, I relate with kids uh, in 25 years, I've had to adapt a ton and year to year, I've had to adapt my communication styles. I've had to adapt my coaching styles. Um, and if I'm not willing to do that, then I'm, I'm doing a disservice to the kids. And hopefully that that transcends and, and they understand that and they see that and it helps them in life. And, you know, we talk about just the classroom. We have our great student athletes, but every classroom you walk into is going to be a little bit different. And you have to understand, you've got to be flexible. Like one teacher may expect you to do something different than what you do in your other seven classes. You have to be able to be flexible and meet them halfway and adapt to that situation so you can find success and so that they can do their job and you, you can, you know, get an A, B in that class. And that, that's our expectation here. And, and just, so I think a hundred percent flexibility and being able to adapt is probably the two most important things I've learned in the last 25 years. I love to hear it, man. I love to hear it. And it's always, it's always different from each coach too. And it depends on, I feel like the, the amount of experience they have, the, the experiences they have had along the way too. And I know you've battled some adversity, man, and you've yeah. come out on top of a lot of adversity too. And I, I respect all of that, that you've been able to do. Final Appreciate question that. for you, brother. Final question. We're going to be going into opening day. We're counting down the, the days until opening tip up. And it's always around Thanksgiving time. Boys and girls basketball in the high school realm always tips off right around that time. So I want you to shout out your first game. Let the Kennedy community know why they need to support this team this year. But also shout out your favorite Thanksgiving Day dish. <laughs> uh, so first game is December 3rd at Newcastle, which is going to be a, Newcastle is a very good team in Pennsylvania. Uh, high quality program. Uh, the reason you got to come out and support is these kids have been putting in countless hours of, of work and effort. And I, I mentioned about being in the shadows. They're stepping out like they're, they're going to be fun to watch. They're, they deserve their your attention. They deserve to have your support. And we expect every year our, our gym is packed. So I, I don't expect that to be any different. But 
but it's going to be new. So, so you're going to see some guys that have been working effortless, uh, tirelessly throughout the off season and through the past few years, and, and they're going to shine. And I think that's one reason to come out because it's a new group of kids. Um, they've been putting the same effort in that the previous group has, and they're going to be working at the same level. Um, so, so come out support. I think we're a fun style of game to watch and, and we're intense. And if you want to see a lot of points, you're going to see a lot of points with us. And then my favorite Thanksgiving dish is probably uh, corn casserole. Second one for corn casserole. I don't think I've had, I've never had corn casserole. And oh, that's great. And, and sometimes you can put some jalapenos in there and make it a little bit really, spicy. really good. Yeah, I might, have to, I might have to look into it, man. You're the second person. I didn't think it was a thing the first time I heard it. Oh no, it is. It's a hundred. It a hundred percent is. It's not Thanksgiving if we don't have that. I've heard that it, it depends on who makes it too. It's it's one of those things that I mean. Yes, it, I, pref- I prefer to be the one who makes it. So. <laughs> I think that was the last one too. They, they're the ones that made it. Well, Coach, now I'm excited for this season. I'm always excited to see your teams on the hardwood, man. You always get the most out of them. They're always fun to watch. And uh, no doubt I know they're going to be giving 150% effort for you out there on the floor. So I look forward to it. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And no problem, Coach. It's been a first edition of Coach's Corner with Coach Comlin, Coach K from JFK. Thank you, guys.